Good morning. Pastor Emily is on vacation this week. Uh, my name is Penny Matthews, and I'm a member of this congregation, and my pronouns are she, her. Uh, this morning, we welcome Dr. Cameron Sharp, who was our guest preacher, and um, I have known him through the Committee on Ministry, where their job is to shepherd ministers. And so I, uh, and those who are in, interested in becoming ministers, and also congregations, overseeing congregations and providing care and support. So there's a little blurb about him in the bulletin, and I saw that your favorite title in retirement is Grandpa. Oh. <laughs> so we welcome you here this morning. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, we acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional land of the Coast Salish people. We honor with gratitude the original stewards of this land, the Duwamish tribe, who are still here. We boldly proclaim that this is a place of radical welcome and inclusion, and pray that we would continue to find ways to put action to our seeking of justice. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, may you find grace and hope here at Alki UCC. Hmm. Our first scripture reading this morning is from the book of Isaiah. And we really need to hear these words. Um, the prophet speaks to us today. And part of you know, our calling is to speak these words to the world. This is from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Hear, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come. Buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread and your earnings for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant my steadfast, sure love for David. And from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 8. Freely you have received. Freely 
give. Let us bow in a moment of prayer. O oh God, let the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. I don't always put a title to my sermons, but this one came to me without even thinking about it. I'm going to be getting loud, so if you be, be aware of that, Eva, because <clears throat> right now I can fear, hear, hear feedback, so I'm afraid to shout. <laughs> now it's going gonna, it's gonna to come out. So um, the title is, come on, it's free. <laughs> what you waiting for? <laughs> come on, it's free. Do y'all like to hear the, the words of God in the Message Bible sometimes? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's one of my favorite versions, although I usually use the older versions because I'm older. And then I get, you know, freed up. Isaiah 55, 1 through 3 says these words in the Message Bible. Hey there! All who are thirsty, come to the water. Are you penniless? Come on anyway. Buy and eat. Come, buy your drinks, buy your wine and milk. Buy without money, everything is free. Why do you spend your money on junk food? Your hard-earned cash on cotton candy? Listen to me, listen well. Eat only the best. Fill yourself with only the finest. Pay attention. Come close now. Listen carefully to my life-giving, life-nourishing words. I, God, am making a lasting commitment and covenant with you. The same that I made with David. The same that I made with Solomon. The same that I made with Isaiah. The same that I made with Peter. The same that I made with Paul. It is a sure and solid enduring love. And thank you for the license that I was taking even with the message. Thank you all very much for inviting me to come back and worship with you while Emily is taking a step away and resting so important for our pastors. Yes? yes. Though my message today does not involve a reference to the LGBTQAI plus community, you know I have to say something. I have to give a shout out, especially this morning to all the gender non-conforming queer and transgender folk hearing my voice. You there might be on the screen. I might be on your screen. God loves you. God created you as you are. God will use you in their, T-H-E-I-R, their church, because God is non-gender. Hallelujah. How long did it take us to get a hold of that one? You know, God called me to the ministry when I was eight. I've loved walking in covenant with God since then. I am an accepted UCC minister. My ministry is also accepted pretty well. I mean, some people don't like me. You know, no account for taste. But if you are LGBTQAI+, or an ally, or cisgender, you are needed and wanted. And I stand here loudly and clearly saying, I am a transgender minister, and so we need more transgender ministers, we need more lesbian ministers, we need more of every kind of minister, even the white male guys. 
the cisgender dudes. Most people just think I'm one of them. <laughs> was well, true. Anyway, today, that all aside, today I want to talk with you about the food that we eat that costs us nothing. The wine and milk that we're invited to come and get without any price tag. In Isaiah, there is no question that there is enough. There is no sound in this passage that there is a rationing or guarding of the food that we can get, the amount that we can treasure. There is clearly enough. Have you ever had a period in your life when you did not have enough? doesn't feel that good. And there are those among us today who might not have enough. Please make it known as you are able so that your church can help you. But the word of God, of course, is enough. And because of that enoughness, there is enough to give away. I loved in the song that Stephen chose for our opening song that you're going to sing maybe all through, where'd he go? All through Pentecost. He's still up there. Okay. All through Pentecost. Give me food to satisfy. Yeah. God wants us to be satisfied. God doesn't want us to just survive. In our scripture passage, we're cha challenged to stop spending money on junk food. Well, in this context, perhaps the money is also time. Uh-oh, meddling now. You know, screen time. Social media time. <laughs> stop spending our money and our time on junk food. Stop laboring for that which does not satisfy. Have you ever been satisfied by scrolling through a news feed? How, fat, how satisfied do you feel? Okay. The words of Isaiah beckon to us. Listen, listen to me. Eat what is good. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. Enter into that everlasting covenant with God, the same as with David in generations, a sure and enduring love covenant. The UCC is built on covenant. Penny said it right. I served in the Committee on Ministry for six years. I just rotated off two weeks ago. It consumed my life. Eight to 12 hours a day I was ministering because I was the lead. And we transformed the Committee on Ministry so now the lead person doesn't have to do all the work. Everybody else does their part, which is the way it was meant to be. Like the church. The pastor doesn't do all the work. The people work and the pastor can minister. So you already know all that. But the covenant with God and with one another is a covenant of love. This covenant we freely give and receive, like the milk and wine spoken of here, and yes, the bread of life. Though we may be penniless, we can come and eat of the goodness of God and live. This freely given love is received as milk, bread, and wine, and is abundant. Think about this, the milk. When you go and pour some on your bowl in the cereal bowl in the morning, how many eat cereal? Yeah, that's what I thought. Because cereal is a mainstay of life, you're right? Put some cereal in the bowl, then you get the milk. Did you just put one drop? No. Do you put just, just barely you can see it? No. You put it so you have to sip some out so you can get the rest of the cereal out, right? Yeah. But God, but God keeps pouring. Yeah. It goes over the top of the bowl, runs off of the table, 
all over the floor. God is so wasteful, right? No, that's the kind of God God is. And even, that triggered the scripture in my head, even the dogs get the scraps. Even the Samaritans get what the Jews can't eat. That was the Old Testament, that was the New Testament broadening of the, of the ways that we live more inclusively, more abundantly, and the cereal runs out, and by the time God's done pouring, it's run out the door and is feeding every person who is thirsty. Shelby Spong, Shelby, uh, John Shelby Spong said, and I quote, I experience God as the source of life, yes, willing me to live fully, yes, the source of love, calling me to love wastefully. Some people talk about extravagant love. This is more than that. I didn't even know there was a more than that until I heard Spong say this and my mind went <laughs> wastefully. What would it look like to have a wasteful kind of love? I've been thinking about it for a few weeks. I actually preached on it a month ago. Have you ever been told you're wasting your time on them? Yeah, you're wasting your time. They're never going to change. Yeah, and what am I going to say? It's not a waste, and I'm going to keep loving, and I'm going to keep caring, and I'm going to keep spending with them. Giving them love is a waste of effort. No, it's not a waste. It's what we're here to do, to care, to love, to share. That's exactly what, when God would have us pour out more love when someone thinks we're wasting. We're on track. <laughs> okay, if you're codependent, yeah, I might have to check yourself. <laughs> this, is hate, this is healthy wastefulness. I've got to throw that in because it's true. If you just think, oh, well, I can give until I've given everything and I've given some more and I'm dead now, well, that's not, that's not wasteful love. That's just stupid. Okay. <laughs> but Jesus does say in Matthew 10, 8, freely you have received, freely give. Freely what have you received? You have received from God God's love. You have received mercy. You have received forgiveness. You have received grace. Freely you have received. Freely give. We're also encouraged in Matthew 11, 28 through, th through 30. I'm reading the message again. Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. <laughs> get away with me. Oh, that would be so fun to get away with Jesus, right? And I'll, I'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. Unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. Well, I could preach a whole sermon on that, wouldn't I? Scripture reminds us of the abundance of God, and we're invited to come over and over in Scripture. Come into the ark. Come unto me. Come, come. The first, the first Scriptures are about coming to God, and the last Scriptures in Revelation are about coming to God, even though it's probably not written linear, linearly, whatever. Come. We're invited to come. Receive all you need and want. The word of God shouts, it's free! It's free! Come and eat all you want. Take the bread without money or cost. And now I've got to close with a story. Oh, now you're in for a treat. I love to tell stories. you like stories? Okay. It's a story set in South Korea. And the main characters are high school and college-age youth. 
They gathered from many churches and several denominations, and they came to a safe place to eat and learn about God. It was free for all. The Buddhists came. The uh, Presbyterians came. The Pescatarians came. Everybody came. They, <laughs> they came because the food was free, but also because the conversation was free. There was no judgment. That's why the Buddhists would come, because they needed to talk, but who was going to listen to them without beating them over the head with the Bible? Okay. So that place happened to be my home, and we shared an evening meal with anybody who came early to eat. And when that time was over, then we worshiped together and learned from the scriptures, and we sat there for two or three hours a night talking about God, in the Bible, whatever their questions were, after a brief sermon. In addition to the Bible study, the youth brought their questions and struggles. One came crying such pathetic tears. It tore me up and says, does, does, does it mean that my ancestors who didn't know Jesus are all gone to hell? No, Yanok, that's not what it means. God is bigger than that. God's love is enough. God encircles your ancestors and you and everyone you'll meet. That's our message, not a restrictive Christ, but an abundant God. So anyway, the, uh, even on the evenings that there were no services, the doors were open if you were hungry, both spiritually and physically. They always knew they could come and sit and talk or eat whatever we had. Now, my allowance for living was $250 a month. The students who came numbered between 20 and 30 at a time every night. And they were growing kids and they were hungry. They, so we served soup and side dishes with every meal. Sometimes we had rice, sometimes we had noodles, but whatever we had, we shared. Now, just as an aside, did you know that if you buy a knuckle of a, of a beef and boil it, you can have nourishing soup for six months for all these kids? Yeah until there was no more bone left. Just a few little things we couldn't find anymore. But it was nourishing. Now, people here, you know, they go to the store and they buy, what is that, bone broth? <laughs> and they spend a lot of money, and I'm going, well, I guess I didn't know about bone broth, but we made bone broth, and we put whatever we had in it, maybe some a little spinach, and maybe some a little, and the, and the, Korean ladies, they would go out on the side of the road, any road, didn't matter where we were in Korea, and they would say, ooh, we can eat this and this and this. And they would come home and they'd make the most nourishing, wonderful side dishes of vegetables. Well, that, that was a digression, I know. But back to the real story, one day the inevitable did happen. We ran out of food. We had not a grain of rice, not a dribble of bone, uh, and the, the, the people that were working with me said, what shall we do, what shall we do, said, what shall we do, what shall we do? I said, hmm. We'll open the doors as always and say to all who come, and we'll share freely with what we have. And they looked at me, and I looked at them. <laughs> And the youth gathered, and we greeted one another in the same joy and the same love as is every other day. We gathered around the table, and we talked, and we laughed, and they shared. The only thing lacking was the aroma of anything cooking in the kitchen. I began today. We are having a different kind of nourishment. We have no physical food to share, but we have an abundance of the bread of life. And then I asked them to turn to Matthew 4, 4. And we read together Jesus' answer to the, to the, to the um, 
devil, whatever that means. And he quoted from Deuteronomy, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And I talked about that. And we had the opportunity to feast on the word of God and how it was a blessing to be called together to fast and pray. We talked about the early believers and how they became the church by gathering in homes like we were that day and loving one another. This love is what became the sure evidence of being Christ-like. I'm not even sure I like to be called a Christian half the time. I only want to be Christ-like. They shared what they, the early Christians shared what they had they worked together and prayed together, and no one was without while someone had what those needed. And the very next day, in that South Korea place, it was like a flower, a little bud that started opening. And the word of God took fruit, became fruit, and the band of Korean children became a youth became a church and they were sitting up and I was sitting in the main floor reading scripture as I usually did and I looked out the window and one of the students got off the bus way over there and I can see him and he had this box on his shoulder and he never brought anything on his shoulder he just showed up and he got to the door and he said I I asked my dad he owns a store and I asked him if I could have a box of ramen to share with my friend He brought that case of ramen and we ate pretty good. Later the same day, some of the youth came with a large basket of grapes. <laughs> they said, we went out to our vineyard and we brought these because we want to share with everybody. Freely you have received, freely give. Their faces were aglow. They said, we brought what we could to share with all so that they could have enough. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the water, and you who have no money, come by and eat. We also, we always have food for our meals from that day forward, for freely we had received and we freely gave. Beloved God, who calls us to come, if we are thirsty, we come to eat that which can satisfy. We come to receive so that we may also freely give. Amen.